How to Project Sales by Customer from QuickBooks in Microsoft Excel. We talked about why you should do this in the write-up. So if you haven't already, read the write-up. I go into detail, and I also give you examples of who this is useful for and whom this might not be so useful for. And in the case where it's not useful, uh, there's just sort of an alternate version of this that I talk about. Bottom line on that is you're either going to look at sales by customer or sales by product. And depending on the business model, you know, one or the other is going to fit better. Uh, just depending. So a lot of service-based businesses are going to look at sales by customer because the nature of many services is such that you have recurring business. An accountant or a bookkeeper, for example, has the same clients that they're doing the bookkeeping for month in and month out, right? Tax prep, not so much. You're going to see your clients once a year pretty much and do it, but you still could look at your sales by customer to see which customers will. Anyway, that's another story for another day. Uh, I guess the point I'm making there is it doesn't hurt still to look at this, but you're not going to do the same kind of projections. It's going to be a little different approach with that. So let's go to reports and sales, and we're going to run the sales by customer summary. And we're going to run it for last fiscal year. Oops, I missed. I hate when I do that. Last fiscal year. And over here under show or next to show columns where it says total only, we're going to change that to month. So now we've got a monthly, a nice monthly uh, sales summary by customer. And we're going to export that to Excel. So we go to Excel and create new worksheet. And mind your options here. Go to advanced. Make sure there's not going to be a space between the columns because you're only going to find yourself having to remove that. And then down here, I like to, I prefer to have this checked off where it says unprinted report and screen, referring to the report header so that I know exactly what report I'm looking at once I'm in Excel. Might not seem necessary in this context because we're just looking at the one report, but I have other scenarios in which I'm running multiple reports and dumping them each into their own tab on an Excel sheet. And based on that, you'll um, you'll see why it's helpful to you know have the actual report title in the spreadsheet and not just in the sort of print setup details or the header. So now we've got a nice concise report in Excel. Now I'm going to do some house housekeeping things, and I'm going to go fast. So I want to preface this by saying the following: um, as I'm going fast, I am going to talk through exactly what I'm doing on the keyboard because I want you to learn how to do this stuff nice and fast like I do it. So I'm going to encourage you to be prepared to pause the video, go run a sample. Sample com company of you, you know, run the same report from a sample company of your own. Watch a bit of this, you know, pause the video and go practice it. That's the way you're going to learn the fastest. If you just sit there watching the video, you're going to have to watch the video a bunch of times to pick this stuff up if it's not stuff you're already familiar with. So the first thing we need to do though is clean it up. So I added a row here because I'm going to want to do some sorting and possibly some subtotaling later. So I need these month headers to be separated from here. Otherwise, uh, Excel is going to try to sort this header into my data range. So really important. Next. Um, Let's just get rid of the split because that just bugs me and I'd rather split the screen right here like this. Uh, let's take these guys and we're going to actually move it all the way over just to get it out of the way. And then B and C, we're going to double click to widen because now what I want to do is make this into a completely flat file. So we have customers with jobs. I need just one simple consolidated customer here. So we're going to insert a column. And we're going to write a formula. Uh, actually, before we write the formula, we're going to, in each case where we have a customer with jobs, we've got to copy them down so I can get them nice and uh, well lined up next to each other. So then right now I'm going to control down arrow to get to the next one. And then back up here, shift space bar to highlight the row, control minus to delete. But first, control Z, I've got to copy it down. Then I delete the top one because that's just kind of a header. And I delete the total. I don't want the totals here. So again, I'm copying it down, control minus to delete the row. And then down arrow, shift space bar, control minus. Here to David Lowe, space down arrow to highlight the two rows, up arrow, shift space bar, control minus. Shift space bar, control minus. Shift space bar highlights the row, control minus deletes the entire row. Copy that down, shift space bar, control minus, down arrow, shift space bar, control minus. So you can get this done nice and fast when you learn to use your keyboard. Uh, and it's the same kind of thing we do in QuickBooks a lot, where we teach people how to use the QuickBooks shortcuts. Don't need the totals. And while we're at it, let's get rid of the total column. Don't need that and don't care about when the report was run for this purpose. So now we need column headers for everything. So this is going to be the customer. This is the job. And we're just going to call this the name for now. Eventually, this is going to become the one consolidated customer name. So now we want to combine things. The formula to combine things in Excel is called concatenate. So I say equals concatenate. And then I'm going to point to that guy, comma, tells Excel I'm giving you the next piece of information to combine. 
quote, colon, quote, says, put a colon in there. I put it in quotes to let it know I'm asking you to put text in there and not some value, comma, to denote the next piece of information. And of course, then I point to the job, close parentheses, enter, and it doesn't render the value because when you export from a database like QuickBooks, oftentimes the formatting comes in as text. So what we can do real quick here is highlight this whole thing, go to the home tab, and over here where it says clear, we're going to clear formats. Then if I do that and click in here and just click in to edit the formula and hit enter, now we've now we're talking. So let me quickly uh, just copy and paste this down. And now I've got my consolidated names for the ones that where there were uh, customers and jobs, but I need to get the other ones over here. So first of all, we want to get rid of the formulas now because we want to sort of live with these. So I'm going to highlight the range that's got anything in it. Control C to copy. I'll right click and we're going to choose this value, this option here, which is to paste value. And what that does is it overwrites the formula with the value of that formula. So now if you notice, there's no more formula in here. It's a nice hard coded uh, piece of data. And then over here, I'm going to select under name. We'll go to data and sort. That brings all of these up to the top. So now I can take the rest of them and copy them over. Control C, click Control V. Now let's get rid of columns A and B. And then if I really loved my formatting that I had there, I can paste the formatting from these back up. All right, so now everything's nice and consistent. And now I've got a nice set of consistent data. Um, I want to get rid of the uh, these guys that have the lines. That was from when there were totals on this stuff. So we'll just do no border. Uh, these guys can come back here. And then let's resize my columns. Perfect. <coughs> took us seven minutes to get the housekeeping done so we can actually start to do some projections. So a little bit more housekeeping. Let's highlight these columns because this is a historical data. So we want to kind of color code that to make that clear. And then we'll highlight some of these columns, give it like a nice little gray. The other thing is we need to deal with the months. So notice the months come in as just these little sort of text versions of the month. So we want to fix that. So let's just say this is a, so this this is October 2019. It's 10-1-19. Want to use the first day of the month, not the last day, because all months have a first. Not all months have the same last day, right? Some are 30, some are 31, some are 28. Some years, the ones that are 28 are actually 29. It's very unpredictable. So we're going to write a little formula here, equals date. And notice the syntax it gives me. Then I ju it just wants the year and month and day that I want for the date. So I'm going to take the year of the one to my left comma, now I need the month of the one to my left, plus one, comma, and then the day of the one to my left. So they'll all be the first. And now I'm having the same problem because of the, um, what do you call it? The formatting from when it was exported. So let's clear the formats on these guys. Clear formats. And then uh, let's go in here. And now we can copy that across. And let's resize. And now we've got nicely formatted dates. But one other thing, we want them to look pretty like they did before. So control one, date. And actually what we can do is, here's how I like to do this. First, we'll just take a good date format like this. And I like the double digit across the board because things tend to line up nicely that way. But then if you really want it the other way, go to custom. Notice how the M stands for month, D for day, and Y for year. So we want um, MMM, probably need to do it lowercase, and then year, year. That's kind of the format it was in, right? <coughs> Beautiful. And then I had to fix that one because we hadn't cleared that one up. And then I couldn't bold them. So, now we got a nice series of dates, but what that also lets me do, you know, it's, it's all fine and good to have it look pretty, but more importantly now, I can copy this out to get my projected months in place. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to finish this up for now with an example of how to just quickly get some data in here. And then in the, in the next few posts that I do here, we're going to look at how to take this further and analyze it and really turn this into a tool that can be very useful. If you're the business owner, um, useful to you because you can start using this to analyze a number of different things, which we'll talk about. And if you're the accountant or bookkeeper, this is something you can do that I would suggest you do without even telling the client that you're doing it. Just do it, prepare the analysis, and then schedule the call. You might want to schedule the call with them first just to make sure they're you know open to it 
Um, don't tell them what you're doing. Just say, hey, I'd like you to you know, have a call with you to go over something that I want to show you, something I did. I think you're going to like it. And, and then schedule the appointment with the client, but don't tell them what you're doing. Then prepare this, and then we're gonna, as we go through the next few posts that I publish here, we're going to look at what you'll have prepared by the time you have that call with that client. But for now, we just want to get a rolling average of each of these customers. So we're going to say equals average and open parentheses and get the last six months. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm holding down the shift key as I press the left arrow. The first move is just the left arrow, right? So let's do that again. A equals average. And notice how as I start typing it, it comes up as a suggestion. So I just hit the tab key because I see that I've got what I want in the tab key. Let's Excel know. Okay, we're there. Let's use that one. Now I'm going to hit the left arrow once and then shift left arrow. Two, three, four, five, six. So I'm going to close parentheses and that's going to give me a good six month rolling average. Control C to copy. Uh, shift right arrow all the way to the end of the range and paste that in and now we're just going to copy and paste that down so we'll get that six month rolling average on every single one of these clients and then next week we'll look at a post on how to analyze this and take this you know one two three five twenty steps further so that when you have that call with your client you'll see where I'm going with this where you can really blow the client away and and get them thinking about how valuable the information that you can provide them really is it's going way above and beyond just entering the financial transactions and doing what we commonly refer to as bookkeeping and actually making the information that we produce as a result of that bookkeeping work really really useful that my friends is what I have for you today on how to project sales by customer from QuickBooks and Microsoft Excel. Stay tuned. We're going to keep going with this, and we're going to keep evolving it and adding to it over the next couple of weeks. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web.